Good evening, it's Aaron with Bowtie Traders. Happy Friday night. Uh, by the way, say hi as you pop in. I've got a lot of friends and regulars that I'd like to see you guys here tonight. So let's get the conversation going. Uh, as far as this project, I really want to let the decorative carved hardware stand out. So we'll do a little bit of a wet distress, um, wipe away kind of thing over right here on that way right there is a mirror and post that stands up even higher and it's, it's a little tricky to try and get all that done on cameras but that will all get the same treatment uh, I'm, if my research is correct this is more of a what i would say have called a gentleman's dresser and um, i guess back in the day back in the victorian times this the taller the better this one is not crazy tall but it is tall you know, it's got the glove boxes in it, so it's really cool. For that. I have my caviar, and I'm also using the mini, which is really going to give me a nice two inch worth of coverage to work with. Really, overall, I, I don't know exactly how much paint or I'm going to wipe away and how much I'm going to leave there. I thought about, you know, maybe towards the middle, leaving a little bit more wiped off than the rest, but. Sometimes you just have to fill it out. So you're gonna do that with, you're gonna see me do that here on camera. Uh, nothing's been taped off, but I did clean it with Dixie Bell's white lining and rinse that all off. And I think that uh, we're ready to go. I didn't see any problems. Usually I look at the water, if it's kind of giving me a lot of tannins, like it's turning colors. But this one was, except for the dirt part, it was pretty clean. So since we're doing char uh, caviar, it's not gonna be too much of an issue when I go to top coat it. Um, so we'll just dive into this. I'm going to try and take it a little easy from a standpoint. I don't want to put too much paint on there because I don't want to I don't want to put so much and spend so much time wiping it off. So let's see how this goes and uh, for the most part all I want to do is um, just get it on there but not tons of paint. So I'll scrape off any excess and I will not be putting a second coat. This will just be one coat. And um, the idea here is that we'll, we want it to still have a lot of the original wood shining through. The one thing I can't say um, for sure yet is how long I want to leave the paint on there. Of course, the longer you leave the paint, the, long, you know, the more it's going to sink in. This is looking pretty good and just to kind of take a, a look at what we uh, we are hoping to have is something along the lines of just a little bit of a, uh, a highlight. I think right now, just a first try, I think I want to let the paint, my rag's too wet and I want to let the paint kind of chill a little bit longer, but I, I like the... Um, the effect that I'm going to get. It definitely, the contrast of the caviar with the real wood is so cool. And keep in mind, caviar is a little bit more of a bluish black. Um, so blue and orange are actually complement colors. So that, that's going to work out really nice. So let's, let's do this. Let's see if we can uh, paint maybe one or two drawers. We'll let this paint chill a little bit. I want it to be a little harder to get off, and um, I definitely don't want to sand anything. So we do somewhere between mostly dry. I will say I want it to be mostly dry because um, the wet distressing works better. But isn't it such a gorgeous piece? I bought like five really great pieces of furniture from one estate sale several weeks ago and I'm, i think i've got two left and this one just kind of like kept saying think about it think about it a little longer you don't see this kind of piece very often it doesn't mean it's rare it just it's not the kind of typical piece you might see someone paint because of the decoration um, but right now i really like 
how thin it is and the paint's already starting to dry and get thick on me. Okay, so don't feel like you have to fill it all in. Yeah, it totally is really nice. So what I'm trying to do for sure is not to turn this into a crazy wow piece. I just need it to be, I want to maintain this, the stateliness of it, the qualities that it already has. So not to um, get too crazy. So caviar to me is totally a great choice. Another choice that might work you, if you wanted to do this combination would be I think in the navy would be nice because it's a nice rich dark blue and it would probably work as well. Now one thing to think about is you can also come back with different other tones like if you wanted to do a little bit of a light glazing um, drag up in the navy or another color. You can put multiple colors on this. So I'm going to put a little bit of mist on here. I don't want it to be too thin. I'm not really dry brushing, but it kind of feels that way. But there's enough paint on my brush that's allowing me to spread it. And I don't, um, you can see brush strokes, by the way, and that's okay. And I can show you kind of where we are. So that's a, just a quick close up. Let me just tell you one tip. If you do one coat of chalk paint, you'll find that it's gonna be easier to wipe off later. So we're just gonna kind of play it by ear here in a second. So let's, I'm just gonna go ahead and, um, if you wanna see the, the reveal of the, how it's gonna look, you may have to wait a little bit longer just because I wanna let the paint dry. Now what I'm going to do too is on the inside I'll put more paint and on this one I'm going to try and just lightly do the middle so it doesn't have as much paint as the edges so kind of creating a vignette and uh, so so that's that's kind of what I'm looking for. Just get the paint on there and then smooth it out if you want. There's a couple knots here, but that's where the mirror goes. So now I'm just going to go back. When, you, when I'm going all over the place, I'm spreading the paint out and then I'm just smoothing it out. So that's spot on the top. Totally transformed it, looking great. just because I find it allows for the paint to kind of slide a little bit better. Not that it's a critical element to the technique. The um, caviar, by the way, I mentioned it kind of has a bluer tone. It's definitely blue on camera, but when it dries, it does dry a little black black tone so it's it's really good. Thanks Lily. She said it looks awesome. Yeah I'm totally digging it right now. 
I'm going around the edge because it's round. It's this corner is actually curved, which is really neat. Nice. Brush strokes up and down. There's a few several watchers tonight. It's great. I don't know if uh, I'm assuming a lot of you know I'm a content creator now for Dixie Bell, so that that's really cool. It gives me opportunities to be more involved in promoting and using Dixie Bell products. So that relationship just started. Excited to kind of keep that growing. And we're almost done. So now I'm just going up and down, spreading the paint out. And a quick smooth to all this side. Just kind of look around, see if you see anything that you want to spread out more. Not super critical. Okay. So let's take a look. The bottom one still kind of has some wet spots. The other thing that I would experiment with is how much, how wet my rag should be and how much I should wipe off. So what we'll do is I don't want to go all in 100%. I want us to just start subtle. So I'm just kind of like, kind of slightly touching and rubbing. Okay. Because I don't want to totally take it off. So you see how that's, all I'm doing is kind of revealing that wood with my finger on a wet rag. So the wet rag is almost acting like sandpaper, but I'm not disrupting and hurting anything. So you, you rub off as much as you want shown. And it's gonna, it should look like maybe over time the piece is worn out, all worn. So you, you rub off as much as you want. Okay, so your call. And remember, I can always come back and either add another color or keyhole. We'll just rub, and whatever my finger touches, that's what gets. So this is what we would pretty much call wet distressing. You do not have to do it right away, but this paint still hasn't like cured. So now's as good as time as any to go ahead and get this off. Just a light, light dragging of the rag over the areas. You might look at what you did on the other side because you don't want this, the right side to look really worn off and the left side is uh, incredibly lacking and distressing. Okay. So totally just take it. Sometimes what I'll do too is towards the center of the piece, is I'll put, keep the focal point there, and as I get further away, I won't rub off as much. But at, at this point, I love the details, so I'm just gonna kinda make my way around. Once in a while, you might leave a little extra untouched, so it just feels more irregular. So just to give you a view, there's the before and after. One coat of caviar chalk paint. I, I am loving it. I still haven't determined. I'll give it maybe a night's sleep. Tomorrow I'll look at it maybe in the, with the light coming through the windows and just see if it needs a little bit of something else. But right now I'm totally sold and I think it feels like, like it was always like this. So that's what we want, right? There's still some wet paint. I don't know if you can see that glistening of the wet paint. So at some point, I'm gonna get ahead of the paint drying and I'll probably just have to call it the night or get something out to accelerate the drying. The key, here's the key is if I stop, I chance not having the same wipe off because I'm doing this all at the same level meaning it's barely been painted. If I, if I rub this off tomorrow night, I will probably have to rub harder because the paint's had a chance to 
cure a little longer. So that's the disadvantage. But I think what's most of my wet paint is in areas that are not, uh, I'm not gonna be rubbing anyway. So I think we're doing fine. And by the time I get all the fronts of the drawers on, done, the top will be ready and you get the, you get the idea. So I'm gonna put a little extra attention to the middle. Uh, and if you want, I might even touch edges where the drawer is. Remembering that sometimes these drawers drag and rub. Um, and I've done plenty of demonstration, I've done other demonstrations where I talk about how to um, wax these drawers and get them to slide it easier. Um, like I'll look to see, like here, there's hardly any gap from the drawer, so it means it's rubbing. See how I can move this up? Usually I'll go in and I'll put a little spacer in there because it's just worn out, so now it's just the wood on the wood. You know, I usually do top coat. Uh, I would use uh, something that's not glossy. So if you're choosing Dixie Bells top coats, don't go to a glossy, more of a, uh, a flat or satin. Don't do, definitely don't do glossy. It'll, not that glossy wouldn't work, but you know, it's like why distress if you're gonna go glossy. Um, other option, maybe after it's cured really well, you could try, I would test it, but you could try and see if hemp oil um, would be a good solution for you. Um, I've not done the hemp oil for chalk paint yet, just because I think, I think that uh, that's a nice idea. I just haven't really put my test to that. So I don't want to miss this thing. another experiment is I want to lighten up the wood just a little bit so I'm going to just take like a ball area of the rag just looking for a little bit of wear but I don't want to wipe off all the paint so I, I just don't want this to feel like it's perfect I, if I do this it's going to feel more like it was used in the 1800s just a little bit of wear, but notice I'm only doing this towards the middle. Just, just go, in the, go into this process with confidence because if you don't, you come back and try and put more paint on here, you're just going to make the caviar darker. Any of you have, would you put this type of furniture in your house? You already have that. I mean, it's not necessarily farmhouse. It's more of a. It's quite the handsome piece. I can tell you that. Wiping off again, just towards the middle. I'm gonna let that focal point. I'm big on that focal point being me telling you where it is. Meaning in this piece, it's gonna be towards the middle. Just you also um, might need to work on finding your favorite rag type. Like you might, I wouldn't use a paper towel. I just think it's really too raspy, but you gotta figure out what you're using there. Really is not a very wet rag uh, because I don't want it to be too wet that... It's hard to explain, I guess. You know, you shouldn't be, I'm not, 
should be able to wring anything out of our rag. It's, it's just, just damn. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.